Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're looking at my version of the flip top cart. My version of the flip top cart is different from the ones you've probably seen. Instead of putting tools on mine, on one side, I have the Rockler T-Track table and on the other, I have a table that I use to do glue ups. The top on this side has matching grooves so that you can place bar clamps. I modified the plans from Brad Rodriguez for this. I basically just made it wider and a little bit deeper so that I could fit the T-Track table. Alright, so I started off by setting up outside and making a few cuts with my track saw. Like I mentioned before, I basically just allowed the cart to be wide enough to allow the Rockler T-Track table. Um, I'm going to include the, the plans to Brad's uh, cart, but if you have any questions on how I did mine or you want to get the sizing that I used, just uh, feel free to ask me a question or, or put a message in the, in the comments. Um, I'll be happy to help. I wanted the cart to be a little bit thicker on the sides uh, just to be able to hold up to a little bit more use. Uh, so I went ahead and laminated two pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood together using some glue. And I also used some drywall screws. If you're going to use this method, make sure that you line up everything correctly and uh, take time to, to put your screws in right. You want to make sure that your sides are as if it was one piece cut. Um, by itself and here I'm using my Amana countersink bit to make sure that the drywall screws fit flush on the sides so that whenever the top is spinning it doesn't catch on anything so off camera I went ahead and edge banded the sides and I'm marking the holes where I'm gonna use a Forstner bit to drill three quarters of an inch hole uh, which is the which is what's gonna hold up the axle um, and the top is gonna spin on on the sides, I used a 3 8 uh, forcer bit to make some holes all the way through to give myself um, the reference points where I'm going to be using my jigsaw to cut all the way straight through. And this is what's going to allow the bolts to be uh, to swivel in and out on the base. So with the sides pretty much done, I could move over to making the top. And here I put together a little 10 inning jig to make some mortises. And what this really does is just make some open spaces so that the bolts can slide in and out. Once I cut all my mortises, I could start uh, gluing up the top. All I did here was take my Rockler uh, glue spreader and put a good amount of glue. And then I took my nail gun and nailed it in place. Just make sure that you don't put a nail through the mortise uh, section. If not, you're going to have to cut that out with like a Dremel or something. Next, it was time to attach my, my tube, which is essentially the axle that the top spins on. I started off by attaching one of the long blocks and then using my clamps to hold the tube in place and then I just uh, threw some nails down. And at the ends I repeated the same process, I just glued and, screwed and uh, nailed the sides, just making sure that everything was pretty square so that when the top spins it wasn't going to catch on anything. Since I'm not attaching any tools to my cart, I didn't really need to fill the voids in the middle. So I just threw the top piece and then uh, put some glue and then, and then nailed it down. And here I'm using a center punch to start the, start the hole and then I use a Forstner bit to drill down about a half an inch, making sure that I check uh, to make sure that it's, it's not going too deep. And then I use a 3 8 bit to drill all the way through 
and then I clean out all the mess that's in there. At this point, I'm pretty much done. Now I just have to put everything together, and this was one of the hardest parts. I was going to wait for my brother to come help me, but I figured the best way was to just flip it upside down, use some spacers to lift it up, and then just hammer the axle all the way through. It actually ended up working pretty well, and I'm pretty happy with the fact that I could do it by myself. Uh, this thing was pretty heavy, so flipping it back over to attach these casters was not easy. I use these three inch casters on pretty much all my projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and include a link in the description uh, and you can check those out. I got my brother to come over and help me drop this thing on the ground. This thing probably weighed about 400 pounds so make sure you have some help when uh, bringing it down. And now we're just testing it making sure it's gonna spin. As you can see, it pretty much spins perfectly. I used a half inch spacer and my Dremel to cut all the way through the tube and I also topped off the ends with a small piece of, of plywood with a three quarter inch hole in it and then I just screwed it to the sides. For the bottom shelf I just used a spacer and then screwed in some inch and a quarter pocket screws. So now the cart was pretty much done. I could go ahead and add the Rockler T-Track top. Uh, here I am just lining it up, making sure it's going to fit. And then I went ahead and screwed it from the bottom and tested the spin on it and it was perfect. So now I could focus on the opposite side, which is going to have a black melamine top. Uh, the first thing I did here was run some T-Track on two strips and then I attached them to the sides. The purpose of these is so that I can attach things such as clamp racks or even eventually like sides for a slab flattening jig. Um, so I decided to make my clamp racks first and here I'm using my crosscut sled to make some dados. Um, I use these awesome rockler clamps to hold it in place while I make the first cut and then the second and then just cut it all the way out. And then I go ahead and test the fit and then I know it's, it's good to go. I take it over and attach it to another strip using some drywall screws as well. And then I use uh, some star knobs to attach it to the T-Track. And with that, the Rockler flip top clamping cart is done. I use side A for assembly, for clamping down stuff for sanding, and then this side I use for glue ups, for gluing up cutting boards, doors, panels, you name it. And right now I'm going to show you an example that you can use this for gluing up tabletop. I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, smash that subscribe button, give me a like and leave a few comments let me know what you guys think about the build. And I'm going to include the links to all the products that I used as well as to my Instagram. You can get a lot more information for the stuff that I do and a lot more videos there. So go ahead and check that out.